Hi guys, welcome back. I have a fun one for you today. I had an order for a half gallon sports jug with two different designs on it. So this was a challenge because these are such large jugs. Um, she purchased these at walmart.com. They're Ozark Trail from Walmart. And they're pretty heavy. So I was going to do them originally um, by the hang method, but I did was able to rig them up on my turner, so that made it a lot easier. So I sanded and washed and spray painted the tumbler. And one of them I'm going to do a baseball theme with the wood grain. So I'm going to show you how I wood grain my tumblers. I um, start off with a flat white base. And I'm going to use teak wood and I believe it was caramel from Tim Holtz. There's really no right or wrong way to do wood grain. I just apply the alcohol ink directly to my tumbler and go back and forth in a brush pattern. This is my alcohol ink brush that I use. Um, it's had a lot of use. So the brush um, makes lines in the alcohol ink as it's drying, and that's what forms the wood grain effect. Wood grain is really easy. I really like how to watch how it comes together, and it's okay if you leave spots open. You could go back in with the alcohol ink and fix it later. So I'm speeding this up here. I just want you guys to know I'm recording my voiceover outside today, and the kids are out here with me, so if you hear... <laughs> kids screaming or anything. That's what I'm doing. So I'm going to let you watch this and just kind of watch my process. If you've never tried out um, alcohol ink wood grains before, they are just so much fun and give it a try because they're one of the easiest effects that you can do with a, um, such a big impact. And especially for Father's Day coming up and with kids in sporting events, these wood grain tumblers are a big hit. This tumbler is going to be a baseball themed tumbler and I'll show you here in a little while how I apply my stitch work, stitching and the name and all that. It never fails whenever I'm doing a tumbler that is not supposed to have any glitter on it. There's so much glitter in my workspace that um, one always kind of finds its way on the tumbler. And I just consider that one of my marks, <laughs> kind of my trademark. You always find a little piece of glitter everywhere. So on the bottom of the tumbler here, just kind of go in a circular pattern. It'll look like cut wood. Now I'm going in with that caramel and just adding some accents and um, a little bit of contrast from the teak wood. The caramel is a little bit of a lighter color. And if you, anytime you add another layer of alcohol ink, it will reactivate the previous layer. So just know that. Once I'm finished with the wood grain, I'm going to let this sit um, for a few hours. You don't really have to. Alcohol ink does dry fairly quickly, but I always tend to just let it sit before I put on my first layer of epoxy. I am going to go in with a layer of epoxy before I add my vinyl decals. So the next step you see on this particular tumbler will already have a layer of um, epoxy applied to it.
So on the second tumbler, after it's been sanded and washed, I did prep it by doing a bit of an ombre with the green to the white. And I'm going to show you how you do my textured grass tumbler. So I'm taking these dried parsley flakes that I purchased at the Dollar Tree and I'm using Mod Podge. And I'm going to use the Mod Podge method to apply these parsley flakes to the green area. That'll give it a grass-like effect. This is going to be a soccer ball, soccer field type tumbler. So I'm going to add this with Mod Podge, just like you would with glitter. I'm putting on a little bit thicker of a Mod Podge layer than I normally would for glitter because the parsley is fairly thick and it's pretty chunky. I've done this one other time and it turned out so neat. I did it for a football turf tumbler and my friend saw that and she just had to have the soccer uh, field for her son. So that's what I'm doing here. This is a fun technique. So I'm just applying that Mod Podge in the area that I'm going to lay down the parsley flakes, which will be in the green spray painted area. I do end up having to, um, the first layer that I put down of the parsley flakes, there will be a few spots that didn't take the um, parsley flakes, I guess. So you can go in after this dries with a second layer or just touch up the areas that are missing. Missing the flakes, I should say. You can just sprinkle this on just like a chunky glitter. So funny side note, this um, parsley, it really has a funky odor. I, <laughs> I was smelling dried parsley for a couple days after I did this. And, um, but don't worry, once you put the epoxy over the tumbler and the parsley, uh, you won't smell it anymore. So I'm going to go in and just tap it down the best I can, just like I do with chunky glitter, to get that to lay flat. And you'll see that there's some spots there that didn't take any of the parsley. But that's fine. I'm going to go back in with a second layer of Mod Podge and fill in those areas. I'm trying my best not to let this get really thick. This is a very big tumbler and I don't want to have too many layers of epoxy. So I'm going to seal it. What I'm doing right here is I'm sealing it essentially with the Mod Podge. Um, it'll also help it to lay a little bit more flat for when I go in with my epoxy layer. And I'm just going to sprinkle um, some of the flakes on the areas that didn't take um, so that way it'll be filled in plus it'll be sealed. You'll see that I don't, I'm not going all the way up to the tip of the green area. I wish that I had a little more, but my idea is to lay my vinyl down and then cover up uh, more of the area. So that way it looks like the grass is on top of the vinyl design. You'll see here in a little while. So I'm just going to go in and I'm going to apply some um, little bit of flakes to the areas that don't, that I missed. 
I'm not doing a whole complete second layer because like I said, I don't want this to be too thick of a tumbler. So I'm just dusting that lightly on the Mod Podge. Essentially you can use any dried herb that is small and chopped up um, like this for the grass effect. So now I'm going in and I'm going to do my soccer vinyl. Um, I have found this on Cricut Design Space, I believe. <laughs> and I'm just, I printed off a whole sheet of the design, but I'm only doing the top portion where it's white. And you'll see that this design does not go completely around the tumbler, but I'm going to piece in with the other pieces of vinyl in a little while, and you'll see. Now, I did put a layer of epoxy over the entire tumbler, and it did cure for 24 hours before I'm doing this step, so make sure you don't skip that step. Um, I wanted a layer of epoxy, um, so that way if I needed to peel my vinyl back up, it wouldn't pull my paint up. So I'm just lining that up with the top of the tumbler so that I can make sure that it's nice and straight. This vinyl is, this pattern is a repeating pattern, so it makes it really nice and easy to piece in parts of it if you're missing some, if that makes any sense. You'll, you'll see what I do here in a minute. Now some of the design is going over the grass, but I'm going to trim that up also here in a few minutes. I'm just using my squeegee here to work out any bubbles that I may have. And just go slowly with this to get it exactly the way that you want. Now this tumbler isn't completely smooth yet. Um, the epoxy over the grass section is still a little bumpy. I believe I put two layers of resin on this tumbler before this step. I believe all in all there was about four layers of resin complete on this whole tumbler. So it isn't too bad. So there you see, it looks really neat. You can kind of envision what it'll look like when it's finished. So I was trying to decide if I wanted to just leave the tumbler split open like this for the name. But then I decided to just piece it out with some of this extra that I have. And you'll see how I cut um, those areas. This is the vinyl for the name that's going on the tumbler. This particular split be, uh, soccer ball design I did find on Cricut Design Space. Um, if you're a paying member of Cricut Design Space, you can download this one for free. And then I just uh, sized the name to fit in that space. But you can also make your own if you'd like. So this is when I was trying to decide if that name would cover enough of the open area. But then I decided that I didn't really like it. And I wanted to put the soccer design behind it um, a little more. So I'm just cutting it here at these lines so I can piece in a whole piece of that um, design if that doesn't make any sense and if it's clear as mud you'll see here in a minute what I do. 
Epoxy is really forgiving whenever you have to piece together vinyl. Just make sure that your areas line up good and then once you epoxy it you can't even really tell that you're piecing things together. So that's the beauty of working with resin. I'm not putting this whole portion on there because it's going to be covered up by the name anyway. But I did want the complete what is that design called? Is that a hexagon? I'm sorry guys, I wasn't very good at geometry in the day. <laughs> so I'm just cutting out these two little areas to um, complete that pattern. Have any of you made any sports tumblers? If you have, I'd love to see it. Um, I've made quite a few, and I really enjoy making sports tumblers. It's just a, uh, something different, and um, different than the kind of the pretty glittery tumblers that we usually make. And you can see that lines up almost perfectly. It's the beauty of a repeating pattern. I'm not worried about the portions at the bottom that are overlapping the grass. Like I said, I'm going to fix those here in just a little bit. I was much happier with adding that because then I didn't have that line in the half of the, um, I guess, hexagon. I'm not sure, like I said, <laughs> what shape this is. There we go, that's much better. So now I'm going to do my vinyl for the baseball tumbler. I did um, lay a layer of uh, epoxy on the baseball tumbler, and now it's time for my decals. I'm doing the red stitching. This is also available on Cricut Design Space, or you can make your own stitching. So this is the way I want to put my vinyl on, and I'm just going to try to line it up. Now this tumbler does have a logo that's a little bit raised. You can kind of see it there on the wood grain. I wasn't really worried about it. It doesn't really detract from the design of the tumbler at all. But I do want to kind of center it, so that way it doesn't look funny when you look at it. I went with a red, white, and blue theme color for the the baseball name. Here's my little baseball. I wanted it to look similar to the soccer ball one since these are brothers. So I went with the circle, that the ball that was split with the name in the center for the baseball just as I did for the soccer ball. I don't believe that I remembered to hit record to show you how I layer these. Um, I was having some technical difficulties, but you'll see what it looks like fully finished here in just a second. I always layer my vinyl before I put it on the cup. Now, you may do it different than me, and that's perfectly fine, but everyone has their own little way of doing things. So after my vinyl is applied, I do go ahead and put two more coats of uh, resin over that, and these are the final products. I hope you enjoyed my video. If you like, if you're new to me, hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up. I really had a good time making these tumblers and I hope that you try it too. Do your own spin on it however you would like. Thank you so much again and happy crafting guys.